thank you very much for selecting uh, for giving me this opportunity and for selecting me as a student in this training program. In 2010, I obtained a fellowship uh, to, uh, to conduct my PhD thesis in the Department of Cell Biology in the University of Cordoba. A title, Identification of, of Novel Molecular Markers in Pituitary Tumors, Contribution to Pathogenesis and Therapeutic Potential, uh, under the supervision, supervision of Drs. Castaño and Luque. My research was mainly focused on the study of human pituitary uh, from a clinical, uh, cellular, and molecular point of view. But also, I have used some uh, mouse and baboon pituitaries and cell lines and, as models. However, I had the opportunity also to use uh, other endocrine tumors, like uh, neuroendocrine or thyroid tumors. Uh, during my PhD training, I had the opportunity to learn some cellular and molecular biology techniques. Uh, during this uh, PhD period in 2013, I had the opportunity to perform two stays in uh, foreign labs, uh, one in Spain in the editor editory endocrine cancer group uh, of, uh, at the Spanish National Cancer Research Center under the supervision of uh, Dr. Robledo, and the other in Italy in the laboratory for endocrine physiopathology and in the University of Ferrara under the supervision of Dr. Satelli and Professor De Giuberti. In these labs, I learned some um, new techniques. Uh, particularly, I uh, performed an approach, uh, a genomic and epigenetic approach uh, to these uh, endocrine tumors. Specifically, during my PhD, I was mainly focused on the study of pituitary tumors and have investigated the role of molecular and cellular biomarkers involved in functional cell response to an aggressiveness and their predictive potential for diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment. Specifically, I was focused on the ghrelin system, uh, in native ghrelin and in one ghrelin variant, a somatostatin system. Uh, both the, the ligand, somatostatin, cortistatin, somatostatin analogs, and the receptors with special interest on SST5 truncated receptors. I also work on the cellular molecular basis of, a, of the different drugs, like the more in, in casein, and so uh, endogenous factors like, like GDNF, melatonin, or obestatin. Our studies, our studies revealed the difference in gene expression, mutation in certain genes, and alter mechanisms of alternative splicing uh, arise as key factors of disease development and lack of response to available medical treatments. Today, uh, the results of my PhD thesis uh, have rise to 10 publications, and I, I have also six uh, papers under consideration. Therefore, my future plans uh, are to perform a genomic approach to endocrine-related tumors. In this scenario, I fully support the emerging notion in this imperative to identify novel biomarkers in endocrine-related tumors that can enable to improve medical treatment, to avoid ineffective therapies, to prevent unnecessary side effects, and to determine benefit of new therapeutics, and to measure tumor burden with high sensitivity and specificity. For those reasons, I'm eagerly interested in working on innovative laboratories that combine endocrinology, cancer research, and genomics. Thank you very much. Chairperson, committee members, colleagues, good morning. My name is Lisa Owens. I have no financial disclosures. So I'm a medical doctor. I graduated in the National University of Ireland in Galway in the west of Ireland in 2008. I'm currently a trainee on the National Training Programme in Diabetes and Endocrinology here in Ireland. Since 2008, I've been working with a research group in the west of Ireland called the Atlantic Diabetes and Pregnancy Programme. It's a group that encompasses five hospitals. It provides clinical care for women with diabetes during pregnancy and also um, carries out research in this area. So um, I'm going to briefly take you through some of the projects that I've undertaken in the last few years. So firstly, uh, in 2010, I looked at uh, obesity in pregnancy. 
So I looked at 2,300 women who were tested negative for gestational diabetes by universal screening using the IDPSG criteria. In a linear fashion, obesity and overweight in pregnancy were associated with an increased risk of macrosomia, cesarean section delivery, congenital malformations, stillbirth and miscarriage. We um, universally screened 5,500 women for gestational diabetes in pregnancy. We wanted to see what would have happened to these women if we used selective screening criteria. So we looked back at these women and applied the ADA, the NICE, and our Irish guidelines. And we found that we would have missed around 15 to 20% of cases of gestational diabetes. Uh, it is thought that these cases potentially are low-risk cases, that nothing would have happened if they were missed. However, we saw that they did have significantly um, poor outcomes, uh, both maternally and neonatally. Our group has been in existence for 10 years now. We first published our outcomes in 2009 and subsequently in 2012 in Diabetes Care. We are about to publish our 10-year outcomes and we have a poster on that at this um, meeting. Uh, over the 10 years, we have uh, instituted a lot of changes, um, but mainly a structured pre-pregnancy care program. And we've seen an improvement in attendance at pre-pregnancy care, folic acid use, and an improvement in glycemic control throughout pregnancy. This is translated into a decreased miscarriage rate and stillbirth rate. However, we have seen an increase in gestational weight gain, which is something that we need to tackle next. I've recently published a paper um, comparing type 1 and type 2 diabetes in pregnancy because we treat these women identically, but I just wanted to highlight that they're a very phenotypic different group during pregnancy. I've also done a study looking at the psychological stress associated with diabetes during pregnancy. We use HbA1c as a marker for um, monitoring diabetes during pregnancy. However, there hadn't been any study to establish what the normal reference ranges were for HbA1c during each trimester. So we did a study looking at uh, taking pregnant women who didn't have diabetes during each trimester and establishing the normal range for HbA1c. Lastly, when we noted that a significant proportion of women who weren't turning up uh, for screening for gestational diabetes, we wanted to figure out why this was happening in order to improve uptake rates for screening. So we did this by carrying out a socioeconomic and geographical analysis of the women in our study group. So my research now is turning to polycystic ovarian syndrome. So in the fall, I'm going to um, travel to Imperial College London under the supervision of Professor Steve Franks. Um, and what I'm going to look at is gonadotrophin receptor function in women who do and do not have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And this is based on the hypothesis, uh, hypothesis that there are significant intrinsic differences between the receptor function between these groups of women. So we're going to extract granulosa cells at the time of IVF, and these cells are usually uh, discarded, so they're not used in the IVF. Um, and what we're going to look at is at a variety of things, including receptor transcripts, um, the um, effects of gonadotrophins on steroidogenesis and glucose metabolism. We're going to look at receptor signal activation and receptor homo and heterodimerization. Ultimately, the aim of this is to look for further biomarkers for PCOS, which will ultimately hopefully lead to pathways susceptible to novel targeted pharmace pharmaceuticals. I just want to acknowledge um, the European Society of Endocrinology for giving me this scholarship. Um, my um, mentor, Professor Fidel Madun, my supervisor in um, Imperial College, Professor Stephen Franks, and all the research collaborators that I've worked with over the years. Thank you. Um, good morning. First, I would like to thank to the committee for this scholarship and uh, for the opportunity to stay here. Uh, so my name is Hilvia Leon and I am a postdoctoral researcher in the physiology department of the University of Córdoba under the supervision of Manuel Tenaz Empere. Today I'll present my research uh, st uh, studies or activity in the Tenaz Empere lab. Reproduction is essential for the continuation of all species. Accordingly, reproductive function is under the control of numerous regulatory signals which act at different levels of so-called hypothalamic pituitary gonadal, or gonadotropic axis. Additionally, a reproductive function is subordinated to the energy reserve, and thus regulated by peripheral metabolic factor, signaling the energy state. The superfamily Arifamide peptide comprises a number of central regulators of the gonadotropic axis, sharing a common carboxy terminal region. In mammals, this family is composed by five groups, among which crispeptin and general HRFRP have an important relevance in reproductive and metabolic, metabolic function. 
uh, during my doctoral uh, studies, I was mostly interested in trying to characterize the, physio the physiological role and major site of action of kispeptin and RFRP uh, using genetically modified mouse model. To this end, uh, we have the developed the, the first mouse line deficient by npff one uh, This mouse line was generated by homologous recombination, and the, the exon 3 was replaced by a cassette, which disrupts the open reading frame of the gene. Our objectives for this line include investigating the putative function of the RFRP signaling in the control of the gonadotropic axis and exploring its potential contribution to the integrative regulation of ener energy homeostasis and reproduction. Another line we are working on is a generate cell-specific GPR54 expressing mouse line. This mouse line was generated using a, a G, uh, generate back on the null uh, GPR uh, over uh, null uh, GPR54 uh, background uh, and was validated by the group of Sud, Kirillov, and Herbison. This mouse lab was transferred to our lab for an extensive uh, phenotypic and neurohormonal studies. So it's known that kispeptin are an uh, essential regulator of uh, puberty and fertility uh, with a potent effect, a uh, potent estimatory effect on the gonadotropic axis. However, uh, whether the direct effect of, of kispeptin on generate uh, uh, can explain the, the whole repertory of uh, reproductive effect uh, of this peptin uh, is still a matter of debate. Uh, this model, this mouse model, uh, allow us to discriminate uh, between direct and indirect uh, generate action of this peptin using uh, an in vivo model. So, uh, as a whole, uh, I believe that uh, my research activity and my doctoral thesis, whose result I will not present for sake of time, uh, have helped uh, to improve our knowledge about the interaction between kif one neuron and, and, the, and other uh, neuronal cell type and their implication in reproductive and metabolic system. And I consider our studies not only shed light into the basic mechanism of the integrative regulation of uh, puberty, fertility, and energy, energy homeostasis, I, I hope it, it will also help to uh, identified a potential target for therapeutic activity. Uh, based on the seminal contribution in this file, uh, the exceptional laboratory and, um, and uh, clinical setup, uh, I am interested in visiting the Kaiser and Navarro lab in Brigham and Women's Hospital in, in Boston. Thank you so much for your attention. Dear professors, dear consultants, dear colleagues, good morning. My name is Navrul Lapashu. I am at the last year of clinical training in endocrinology and diabetes, and I come from Greece, a beautiful country with beautiful people. I'm very glad to be here today as an international endocrine scholar, and I'm very grateful to the European Society of Endocrinology for this great honor. I graduated with honors from the Medical School of the University of Ioannina in Greece in 2005. I obtained my PhD with honors in endocrinology under the supervision of Professor Agathocles Tsatsoulis at the same university in 2010. With the laboratory guidance of Professor George Papadopoulos, we showed multiple defects in T regulatory lymphocytes in patients with type 1 diabetes. For my PhD research work, I have been received important scientific awards. Then, I moved to London as a fellow of the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. I worked at St. Bartholomew's Hospital under the scientific supervision of Professor David Leslie. During this time period, I underwent both clinical and laboratory training with research focus on diabetes. I learned many techniques and I participated in many international projects. Also, I started a very fruitful collaboration with the Department of Cardiovascular Sciences at Hammersmith Hospital, Imperial College, London. I still remain actively engaged with the department in various research programs. 
Then I continued with clinical training in endocrinology and diabetes at the Hellenic Red Cross Hospital in Athens under the excellent direction of Dr. Andromachi Vrionidou. During this period, I participated in clinical research projects in various fields, as I really wanted to get exposed to the most possible aspects of endocrinology. Also, I entered a new for me and very interesting scientific area as I started to perform systematic reviews and meta-analysis under the scientific supervision of Professor Houlis from University of Thessaloniki. After multiple projects in various fields of endocrinology, many of which have already been transformed in a series of publications in prestigious journals, I have now decided to focus my research interest on obesity and diabetes. Obesity is a growing problem in industrialized countries associated with a huge number of health problems. There is a clear need for the development of new treatments. I'm moving to Boston in order to join Professor Christos Majoros' group at Beth Israel Diaconis Medical Center, Harvard Medical School. The Majoros Lab Research Program focuses on obesity, diabetes, and adipokine biology. The work spans the entire spectrum from animal physiology and molecular biology through observational studies to physiology and interventional clinical trials. Their work has resulted in more than 460 publications and they have received more than 24,000 citations. It has also resulted in patents for diagnostic and therapeutic applications. I'm really excited with my next scientific step. I would like to thank all my professors, consultants, and colleagues who have essentially contributed in my career development. Again, the European Society of Endocrinology for this prestigious scholarship. Please allow me to dedicate this honor to Professor Agathoclis Tsatsoulis from the Department of Endocrinology and Diabetes, Medical School, University of Ioannina in Greece, as he is the first one who gave me the great opportunity to enter the magnificent academic world of endocrinology and diabetes. Thank you, Professor. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, I started my career in uh, Professor Tinaone's group in Malaga in 2007. Uh, I mainly focus on three topics, oxidative stress and inflammation in several pathologies, such as metabolic syndrome, morbid obesity, or gestational diabetes. I also performed fecal microbiota analysis in the di diabetes one, and the moderate red wine consumption and study the role of adipose tissue in obesity and diabetes by performing a um, non-targeted proteomic approach in adipose tissue from diabetes, uh, diabetic uh, pre-obese subjects, and studying apoptosis and angiogenesis in the adipose tissue of uh, diabetes and um, obesity subjects. I started my first postdoc in Professor Escobar Morreale group at the Hospital Ramón y Cajal in Madrid in 2012. And I performed uh, two studies, hormonal, metabolic, inflammatory, and oxidative stress response to the different dietary macronutrients, protein, glucose, and lipids. And study the circulating microRNAs in the pathophysiology of androgenesis and obesity. Here I, I show uh, the results that we, we had uh, studying um, four microRNAs that were involved in inflammation and metabolism. Uh, and we observed that uh, obesity decreased uh, those, uh, the levels of these uh, microRNAs, but the, that there was an interaction between the gender and the, pec uh, the pecos and the obesity, consisting in re uh, that the obesity reduced uh, these levels in control women and men, and um, a tendency of a, an increase of these levels in pecos. And that this was um, partly explained by the free testosterone levels. On 2014, um, in, in the middle of the year, I began a second postdoc at the um, 
at the Maastricht University in the Leon de Wins group because I was interested in, in uh, studying uh, microRNAs and I wanted to learn new techniques. And uh, so long I have been studying the, those microRNAs involved in the process of browning and whitening of adipose tissue. I have been uh, setting the protocol, a fine protocol for the transdifferentiation, transdifferentiation of 3L1 cells. And as you can see here, on the day nine, the white adipocytes are turning to base uh, differentiation. You can see the difference between the white with a bigger lipid droplet and bigger size of the cells. For my future plans, I would like to obtain personal grants on a regular basis to continue these studies and increase my participation in public-private partnerships and consortia. For a long term, I would like to be an independent, successful scientific and leader of a European laboratory. Many thanks for all the entities that I have been working and all my mentors. Thanks. <laughs>